Fortnite Chapter 6 Season 3 Galactic Battle is here, and as with most new Fortnite seasons, the game's performance is dog water. Now don't worry if you're experiencing frame drops and game crashes too, because even my PC was struggling initially. However, luckily for all of you guys, your boy found the fix. And it's to subscribe. No, but for real, today I'll be walking you through some new FPS tweaks, optimizing your Epic Games launcher, fixing all of your in-game Fortnite settings, as well as showing you the best colorblind and brightness mode options in the new Star Wars locations. So make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and use code Jerrion to support the content. But otherwise, guys, let's get into my Chapter 6 Season 3 Settings Guide. Alright, so as always, timestamps will be down below, feel free to skip to whichever section you please, but we're gonna start outside of Fortnite in the NVIDIA app. So this NVIDIA app, you can see it down here, it used to be called the GeForce Experience application, they basically renamed it and changed how it looks and how it works. Usually, I would start on the left here in the Drivers tab, I would tell you guys to install the latest drivers, download them, all of that stuff, but come on, how many times do I have to tell you that? So I'm gonna skip that for now, but I am on the newest driver, so... This April 30th has worked well for me, and instead I'm gonna tell you guys to go on the left to the graphics tab. So essentially what this is, I know it says the in-game settings here, which are the in-game for DX11 and DX12. We're gonna look at all of these later actually in Fortnite, not through the NVIDIA app. But what they're essentially trying to do is combine the NVIDIA control panel as well as like your Fortnite settings all into one place. The control panel is this stuff, your driver settings. So if you want to copy them and get the best settings, this is what they should look like. Unfortunately, you can't change these in the NVIDIA app. I know it's weird, but it just shows what you currently have as well as what they recommend. Guys, the recommended is absolutely terrible, so do not change to any of these. The way to actually change to all of these in the NVIDIA app is to press the optimize button, which again, do not do. They're gonna put you on DX11 with all epic and just these ridiculous settings. You want all of them on near, low, disabled, or performance, basically what I'm showing you, as well as what I will show you. But what you can change and what we'll go into are your driver settings down here. So starting at the top with RTX Dynamic Vibrance, have this on global off, and you can see there's a little pencil inside a box. That means you can actually change it. So use global, off is fine. CUDA GPUs, same thing. Use the global for whatever GPU you have. Mine's the 4090. After that, those are disabled. Low latency mode have on max frame rate have off we're gonna cap our frame rate inside of fortnite monitor technology i use fixed refresh vulcan slash open gl present method just have this on the default and actually there's a little button next to them so you can read what it does and why you should have each of them on whatever setting you choose and then the really important one power management mode put this on prefer maximum performance that is really important for fortnite like Actually. Finally though, texture filtering and negative LOD bias have on allow. Vertical sync have off. You can have this on if you experience screen tearing. It's actually not bad through the NVIDIA app, but do not ever use the vSync option inside of Fortnite. So yeah, these are the important driver settings, which again, these are inside the NVIDIA app on the graphics tab. And even though these do look different, pretty much all of those settings, if you close out of the NVIDIA app, you right click and you go to your NVIDIA control panel, that is where all of these are. It is your 3D settings, not all of them, but it's specifically for Fortnite. If I went to the Fortnite client. So it's basically an easier way to go about going to these, as well as it doesn't show all of them. But if you want to copy my global settings, these are what my global NVIDIA control panel settings are. Pretty much everything on off, either the default or if it's low latency mode, which we went over, have that on. But yeah, we are here for the best performance, for the best settings for Fortnite Chapter 6 Season 3, and that is what these look like. So copy them. And if you couldn't find where they are, make sure on the left here, you go to adjust image settings with preview, click the middle option, use the advanced 3D image settings, and then click take me there. That's going to bring you to where we just were. Hit apply after, exit out, and boom, you have optimized all your NVIDIA settings. Unfortunately though guys, we are not quite done yet with the out of Fortnite settings, because where I want you to go now, which, why is this so big now? Oh my lord. Oh, that's what she said. Go to your Epic Games Launcher, Library on the left, and where you have Fortnite, you guys probably have more games, but... 
I'm a loser who only plays Fortnite. Click on the three dots, go to options, and now you are in your Fortnite installation options. So I tell you guys every season how important these are, but just like every other season, make sure you have these settings selected, which, oh my god, I just realized they don't let you uninstall DX12 anymore. What the heck? There used to be an option to uninstall DX12. Hmm, that's interesting. I guess they just want everyone to have DX12 as an option. Or maybe, maybe they watch these videos and they realize that everyone was uninstalling them because it makes your game run worse. But if you don't play Fortnite Save the World, if you don't care about high resolution textures, which you really shouldn't because they don't really make a difference in your game, but they do require 20 gigabytes of storage. Uninstall those two, so uncheck them. Press apply. That should do like a little action here, but I don't have them installed. The only thing you do want installed is obviously the Fortnite core, which is required, and then the pre-download streamed assets. I've explained it numerous, numerous times, but have it checked, press apply, it will install them, and what that will do is, as the name says, it's gonna pre-download all the assets that your game normally would have to stream, yes, literally stream and download as you're playing. It will just have the 9 gigabytes of assets already on hand, so you're not lagging, you're not losing FPS, and you're game will be running way, way smoother. Finally, into the actual in-game settings, which... I don't know if you guys can tell, but they made some weird update in creative, at least on this map. Do you guys see, like, how blue everything is? I don't know... Oh, wow. I knew they removed the wall running crap, which I think is good, but... Do you see how blue everything is? Look at the brick. The brick is supposed to be red, and it's like got a weird tint of blue. I'm not sure if that's Star Wars or whatever weird gimmick thing is going on in the game, but they made my favorite creative map for these settings videos. <sighs> they changed it. Enough crying though, I've also, hey, I've moved down here because we're going through all of your in-game Fortnite settings and you guys know the drill. So starting at the top with your display settings in the video tab, the first tab you have, window mode you should have on full screen. Window full screen is not the worst, windowed is very bad. But if you read it above my head, in full screen mode you cannot interact with other windows as easily, but the game will run slightly faster. And that's what we want. We want the best performance. After that, resolution I have on 1920 by 1080. That's the default. However, 1600 by 900 is not that bad. Oh. And if you guys don't believe me, do you guys even see a difference? If you can see a difference in the amount of pixels and how high or low quality you think this is, then either you're lying or you have really good eyesight. V-Sync though, this is the setting I told you guys in the NVIDIA app that it's not bad in NVIDIA, but on Fortnite, you do not ever want to put V-Sync on. Leave this off. Frame rate limit, I have at 360 FPS because I have a 360 hertz monitor. You want your FPS limit to be either at your monitor monitor's refresh rate or one above it, so if it's a 144 hertz monitor, you can use 144 FPS or 160. 165 hertz monitor, use 165 or 180. It's not a bad thing to go above it or just stay at it. And then finally, rendering mode. You guys should know this by now, we're in chapter damn 6, season 3, but performance mode, aka lower graphical fidelity mode, that will get you the best FPS. Oh, and actually, let me move my head a little bit so you guys can see above it. Look at this little paragraph above my head. Performance is a mode that offers significant performance gains by disabling most rendering features to reduce memory usage and lighten the load on CPU and GPU. Wow, that's amazing epic. After that though, we're going to skip your graphics settings. They will be in the timestamp down below, but I usually finish the video with those settings. And instead, we're going to go straight to your graphics quality options for performance mode. So you notice guys, performance mode is in parentheses because these are not the full graphics quality options. There's literally only three, or I guess two that you can change in game. But when we go to DX11 slash DX12, there's gonna be like 10 more options. And I know I say it every damn season, but even though we're on performance mode and we can't change those other options, look at the top left there. You see how it says how much input delay I have? Well, those options, especially where it says the U and the B, those are settings you can only get on DX12, but look, 
you can literally see the amount of input delay I have is affected by those settings. I can also just feel it if I had those settings changed and was on way higher input delay. Yet, I'm on performance mode and Epic won't let me change those settings, which affect my game, unless I go to DX11 and DX12 and then switch back. It just makes no sense, man. Anyways though, 3D res I have on 100%, view distance I have on near, textures on low, as well as meshes on low, but if you read that, they cannot be changed while playing a match. And because it is kind of related, advanced graphics, these also on DX12, there are three more that will show up. But for now, show FPS, have on, and report performance stats, have this on disabled, because even though it would help Epic in theory, maybe, you know, fix the game, we don't want to sacrifice our FPS for that. So all of these are the best performance mode settings. You could copy them, write them down, or just pause the video if you are confused. Used. Because where I'm gonna go now, before, which is actually good to remember, I'm gonna switch to DX11, you could switch to DX12 too, usually this isn't here because we uninstall it, but I guess DX12 is here to stay. I'm gonna switch to DX11, I'm gonna press apply, but I'm not gonna restart, I'm gonna decline it, and instead where I'm gonna go is to the game tab on the top, which is this little icon, it's the fourth tab, and now we're gonna fix the other settings, which some of these are movement, combat, but if you scroll down, to where it says extra game options. A lot of these settings, they will affect your FPS, and luckily, if you're on performance mode, they still show up. So beginning with NVIDIA highlights, have this off. If you wanna use NVIDIA highlights, do it through the NVIDIA app, not through Fortnite. Same goes for peripheral lighting, have this off. Minimum field of view or FOV and maximum FOV, these are for while you slide, so they're not actual FOV, but you can copy mine. And then if we keep scrolling down, replays. If you guys want the best FPS, and if you're truly struggling, I would just turn all of these off. I pretty much never really use my replays, but sometimes they're useful because I do record, I do create content. But if I was one of you guys who just wanted the best FPS for tournaments, for ranked, or even just for playing with your friends, I would turn all of them off. And same thing goes for your energy saving. There's three settings here now, which or activate sleep mode after, you could turn this to never because screw saving energy. But I have this on 15 minutes myself, which is that weird thing. It makes a beeping sound and then a screen pops up and it says, are you still playing Fortnite? And finally, enable idle energy saving. That is on the front end here. And then this is the window energy saving. You could turn both of them off if you don't really care about saving energy. It's honestly not a bad idea to have it on because saving energy is not like technically a bad thing and this is only if you're not playing Fortnite but if you're kind of weird and believe in conspiracy theories like I do just turn it off because you know we want the best FPS Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna restart, and we're gonna now boot up Chapter 6 Season 3 in DX11 to finish off all of our settings. Let's go straight here, and yes, rendering mode is on DX11, so we've restarted. And just to make sure it is, if I go down to the graphics quality, there's no more performance mode in parentheses, and just look at how many damn settings there are. I do not understand why Fortnite just doesn't put these options on performance mode, man. They make us restart our game just to get all of the good settings. So graphics quality, the auto set quality option, do not ever press this like never. Quality preset I have on custom, but a lot of you guys probably won't have it. And look, it's going to disappear. Boom. So it's gone now. Look, low, epic, high, medium. There's no custom. So to get custom, quality preset, have on low. That's gonna basically turn everything to off, near, or low, which is what you want. You want all of these on the lowest setting possible. All we're gonna change to make this go to custom, which if you pay attention, it's gonna magically pop up, is when you change your 3D res to 100%, Boom, custom magically appears. And now you have the same exact settings I showed, which is what you want, it's cool. Down now though, to the advanced graphics for DX11. These are the three settings that were not there. Use GPU crash debugging, have this off. 
and I shouldn't need to explain this, but enabling this feature comes at a small performance cost. Oh, hell no. Latency markers I have on because that is the option to actually see how much input delay you get in game. But if you want the best input delay, you probably shouldn't have it on. It basically should only be used for testing. So have this off. And then NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency I have on plus boost. That will work with that other setting before in the NVIDIA app, the prefer maximum performance. That will work together with your Reflex Low Latency to get you the lowest input delay possible. Oh, and also guys, for the low latency markers, if you want to have it on, you're going to need to go to your game UI setting, which is the HUD, and under latency debug stats, that is how to turn this option on where you can actually see it, because if you don't, look how next to my ping, there used to be numbers there, now it's just like a weird, weird dark gray box. Either both of these settings need to be on, which will allow for all of those numbers to pop up, and the dark box has a line with a white thing that shows you if it's spiking or not going through it or both of them have to be off because if you have this one off you don't need the one in your game ui on as well so latency debug stats both on or both off and boom. Those are the best DX11 and DX12, as well as performance mode settings. You need to change it if you're on performance mode. However, now you can actually go back to performance mode, press apply, and restart now. To finish off these settings, I'm going to the outpost enclave. But really quick, guys, look how crazy this looks. Bro. I know some people might be getting sick of all the Star Wars stuff, but I can't lie. <laughs> this looks ridiculous. Ridiculous. It looks so sick. And I don't even really care about Star Wars. Regardless though, no, I did not forget about the final settings. The one I said I would skip over, and I did. Your graphics settings, aka your brightness and colorblind mode. Oh wait, I might have leaked which one I told you guys to use. <laughs> but if you've seen my videos before, you should know that I pretty much always use default settings. And at the Outpost Enclave, it looks pretty damn good even in the desert biome. I really never stray away from 100% brightness, default user interface contrast, no colorblind mode, and user interface parallax off. This season, I actually think no colorblind mode is probably the best way to go. Like, the whole map is just so colorful now. There's so many different spots. Even the First Order base, which is all snow and really bright, just like the desert biome, you don't really want to change your brightness how you you would for Crime City, where I told you guys last season to crank it. It's just gonna be way too bright. Imagine this in the snow biome. Oh, hell no. But with that being said, you also don't want to go the other way to way darker, because even though it looks fine here, it actually looks really nice. Crime City is still in the game, so 50% brightness, that is not gonna cut it. I am on default everything. The only colorblind mode I would use is what I showed before. Protonope 5, that is what I flew in on, and guys, it actually looks really, really nice. It changes the blues around because, like I showed in creative, they definitely change the blues, the hue of it, a little bit. So you can try that out, let me know what you think, I probably will be sticking to default. And as far as your digital vibrance goes, which I've showed, if you're on PC, you can close out of your game, go back to your NVIDIA control panel, and where it says on the left, adjust desktop color set. Settings. Oh, let me move back. Boom. Adjust desktop color settings. Digital vibrance. By default, it's on 50. I know some people play on 55, 60%. But really for this season, where I think it's vibrant enough, you could have everything on default, even as the sun goes down and the map looks great. So boys, enjoy Chapter 6, Season 3, and hopefully these settings help you out. <laughs>